Did you have India on your radar when it comes to conquering space? Probably not. This Asian nation has now single-handedly sent a probe to the lunar surface and shocked everyone. Chandrayaan-3 is said to have finally found what NASA has long hidden. Let's find out together what it is. We can already tell you that their new findings will probably change your view of the moon forever. India has now secured its own place in the history of space travel with its moon landing. With the Chandrayaan-3 mission, the multicultural Asian nation left all other space superpowers behind. Never before had NASA dared to land a probe in the dangerous South Pole region of the moon. The scientific community of this Earth was thrilled and shocked at the same time to witness how safely and elegantly the Indians set down a lander and a rover in the southernmost reaches of the moon. On August 23, 2023, the two space probes touched down gently and safely on the lunar surface. The landing maneuver was considered an exceptional technical achievement. This makes India the fourth nation on this Earth to land a spacecraft on the moon, and India is the very first nation to explore the South Pole. The Russians botched their own South Pole landing just three days before Chandrayaan-3. Lunar 25 was supposed to be as exceptional a project as the Indian Space Agency's mission, but the Russians lost contact with their probe before it could even begin the landing maneuver. Those responsible in Moscow had to watch helplessly as their probe, which cost around $150 million, thundered unchecked onto the moon and crashed there. The shock was deep. For Russia, the action was an important comeback on the international space scene. Only three days later, the disappointed Russian scientists and engineers had to watch as Chandrayaan-3 floated safely to the moon. The South Pole is a rough terrain, rugged, with razor-sharp boulders and few planes. Because of the location, Radio communication is not possible directly. Signals take 1.5 seconds, which would have been too much to manually steer Chandrayaan-3 to the surface. The Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, equipped its probes with a highly innovative automatic landing system. With cameras and built-in intelligent navigation, the probe could scan the terrain on approach, confidently interpret the conditions on the ground, and make all the corrections in flight course necessary to gently load in one plane. This was precision work and finally earned India all the international recognition and praise that the nation had so long desired. Pragyan and Vikram launched the mission. A few days after the landing, the Indians presented more photos and video footage that went around the world. Pragyan, a small rover, rolled determinedly down the ramp of lander Vikram made a few laps in the lunar dust, charged its batteries, and got underway. Vikram, the lander, is a stationary research and measurement unit. They are coordinated by a probe located in lunar orbit. Vikram and Pragyan first radio to the orbiter, which then sends the data on to Earth. The mission goal of the two is to explore the South Pole. Temperature measurements are to show, for the first time, how cold it really is around the South Pole of the Moon. Further climatic measurements should give us more insight into conditions at the South Pole. In the future, the South Pole could be crucial for humans on the Moon, because that's where the Moon's largest water deposits were thought to be before the Indian mission's findings. The water ice deposits mean that in addition to drinking water, there is even the basis for fuel for lunar vehicles and rockets on site. Those who acquire enough knowledge about this region and have a presence on the ground will have a significant advantage in the race to colonize the moon. Pragyan, the rover, was built to make smaller exploratory trips. To do this, the tiny craft navigates remotely from Earth, even over rough terrain. Now let's look together at what Vikram and Pragyan found on the moon. The First Discoveries of Pragyan and Vikram the lander and rover are equipped with more than a dozen scientific instruments for their mission, including a laser to study lunar rocks, detect water ice, and determine elements and gases in situ. The rover has been equipped with a seismometer to record possible quakes inside the moon. The Vikram lander is a meteorological investigation instrument. Ultrafine sensors will record all climatic conditions and provide the first accurate weather data from the moon's south pole. This is a challenge because the lunar South Pole is cold, very cold in fact. Although it's not covered with ice like our South Pole, 
the challenges that technical equipment has to withstand are enormous. Only 10 days remain for the rover Pragyan and the lander Vikram for a first run. Then, the icy cold moon night broke in, which lasts on the Earth's satellite, after all, a whole 14 days. On the other hand, the two had around-the-clock time for their mission during the lunar day, which also lasts 14 days. Pragyan was able to charge his solar cell and set off with a unique wheel mechanism called the Rocker Bogey. This vehicle navigates the lunar soil more safely than any before it. Unlike conventional systems, this mechanism does not have all wheels moving at once, giving the rover flexibility to compensate for elevation changes and avoid craters. Vikram, the lander, landed on the moon with a temperature probe containing 10 sensors that could reach up to 10 centimeters below the surface. The first data collected below the surface showed a sharp difference in temperature between the areas just above the ground and below. We already know that temperature on the moon varies between extremes. Due to the lack of a balancing atmosphere, 120 degrees Celsius can be reached during the day when the sun is directly shining, while the thermometers at the same location drop to minus 130 degrees Celsius at night. Just imagine that's 250 degrees Celsius difference in temperature between day and night. In this context, the most striking thing about the moon is the duration of the heat radiation. Do you remember? We have already talked about the fact that the lunar night and the lunar day each last 14 days at a stretch. So, 14 days brewed regionally 120 degrees and then 14 days of darkness and sub-zero temperatures that permanently surpass our Earth's cold records. The coldest temperature ever recorded on the Earth's surface was on July 21, 1983, at the Soviet Vostok Station in Antarctica, and was negative 89.2 degrees Celsius. Compared to lunar night, that's almost cozy warm, and we only have those conditions at the poles. Would you want to be a lunar settler under these conditions? Let us know in the comments after the video. Chandrayaan-3 proves NASA was wrong. Now let's get to the discovery that makes NASA look old. Until now, the measurements recorded by NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter were considered standard in the world of science. But Vikram's measurements now show that they are wrong. The assumptions and measurements about large water ice deposits could also be wrong, at least as far as the South Pole is concerned. These are groundbreaking new findings that will drastically change plans for colonization of the Moon in particular. Through the current lunar mission, we have found that temperatures on the Moon although subject to extreme variations, are generally too high to keep water ice stable on the surface. In the vacuum of space, water must reach temperatures below negative 160 degrees Celsius to go directly from a solid to a gaseous state without passing through the liquid state. The data measured by Chandrayaan-3 showed temperatures warmer than negative 10 degrees Celsius even in the deepest layers studied. Therefore, Stable water ice is unlikely to be present at the surface of the Moon's South Pole. However, water ice may exist below the surface. The massive temperature variation between below and above indicates that lunar dust serves as an excellent insulator. Lunar regolith could protect water ice below the surface from the boiling temperatures at the bottom. This also means that if we were to build space colonies on the Moon, its soil could serve as a natural insulator keeping heat, cold, and radiation out of the habitat. This makes it more likely that NASA or SpaceX will plan future lunar homes as subterranean or semi-subterranean living units. Another significant Chandrayaan-3 discovery was the detection and measurement of sulfur on the lunar surface. Pragyan aimed his laser detectors at the lunar regolith and detected elements such as aluminum, calcium, iron, chromium, titanium, manganese, and oxygen. So far, so good. Researchers had already expected this. But the rover found another element that is rather unusual, sulfur. It was first suspected in the 1970s that sulfur was present on the moon. However, researchers assumed that the sulfur occurs bound in minerals. Now, Pragyan proved that sulfur is freely present on the lunar surface, and that is a remarkable advance. Sulfur on the Moon could confirm some scientific theories about the Moon's formation. Scientists have always believed that the lunar surface was originally covered with a thick layer of hot molten rock until the surface crystallized. 
Bragian's find could be proof of that theory. Sulfur also fuels hopes of growing crops on the moon, as the element is a great fertilizer for plants. And that's not all. With this latest discovery, Chandrayaan-3 could change the world of science forever. Vikram's seismometer registered a tiny moonquake that lasted only about four seconds. The impact could have been caused by a tiny meteorite. What was really unusual about the recordings was a reverberation of the quake. Researchers have held very similar data before. Back in the 1970s, the moon reverberated so long and strangely after a recorded impact by a rocket part of the Apollo missions that researchers came up with the idea that the moon might be hollow inside. One of the final accomplishments of the mission was a measurement of the density and temperature of the lunar ionosphere. Vikram reported a relatively sparse mixture of ions and electrons in the roughly 100-kilometer thick layer of electrically charged plasma that envelops the moon. Initial measurements of the plasma showed between 5 million and 30 million electrons per cubic meter, which is relatively low compared to Earth's 1 million electrons per cubic centimeter. But that's good news, because the lower the density of the ionosphere, the easier radio signals travel there. Radio signals from the Moon to Earth, or among future lunar settlers, would therefore have to be transmitted faster than on Earth. After this last measurement, lunar night fell. Indian space flight put Pragyan and Vikram into lunar sleep. During this time, the two had to brave temperatures of more than minus 100 degrees throughout. With the dawn of the lunar day, the duo was supposed to turn on again automatically. So far, however, that hasn't happened. And at the time of this video's release, it unfortunately looks like India's probes froze to death after just one scientific run. Hit the subscribe button now because there are many more highlights to come.